Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. So in this lesson, we're gonna start a new topic. We're gonna start talking about numerical integration. Now, if you remember with Taylor's series, Taylor's series gave us the ability to do two things. It gave us the ability to approximate a function. For instance, if we have a function like um, ln of x or e to the x, we can approximate it using its corresponding polynomial. But another thing that Taylor's series did, it also gave us the ability to approximate a derivative. Whether it's a first, second, third, fourth derivative, we can, if knowing only the function, we can approximate the derivative using the centered finite difference, the backward finite difference, or the forward finite difference. So that covers one half of calculus, because one half of calculus deals with derivative, it deals with differentiation. So now we have a way to numerically differentiate uh, a function and get its derivative knowing only the function. We did not apply any differentiation rules. So the question here is, can we do the same thing to the other branch of calculus, which is numerical integration? Knowing only the function, can I find the area under the curve without any use of any integration techniques at all? And the answer is yes. In this lesson, we're going to go across the first technique that helps us do that. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to learn how to approximate the area under the ln of x curve between 2 and 4 and using the trapezoidal rule, which is the first technique. And also, we're going to develop a program to go through um, what is the uh, area under the curve with an error of below 0.1%. Uh, now, if you remember from, um, from calculus, we integrate this by using integration by parts. We integrate ln of x using integration by parts. And we get x ln of x minus x. And when we evaluate it between 2 and 4, we get a value of 2.15888. So this is the exact area between 2 and 4. So when we're going to approximate the area between 2 and 4, what we're going to say, okay, we're going to approximate this area using the simplest function that we know. And the simplest function that we know is a polynomial, right? So we're going to use a first order polynomial, linear function, to approximate this area. And we're going to say, okay, so uh, we're going to connect these two lines, and now we have a, a linear function representing this area. And we're going to take the area under this um, first order polynomial. And that's going to be an approximation for the area of ln of x between 2 and 4. Now, what is the geometric uh, shape of an area under a first order polynomial? Well, it's a trapezoid, right? Which is where this rule gets its name from, the trapezoidal rule. Now, what is the area of a trapezoid? Well, the area of a trapezoid is width, in this case, b minus a. Uh, uh, multiplied by the average height. And the average height here is f of a plus f of b divided by 2. So this is the area of a trapezoid, and we're going to take this as our approximation for the area of ln of x between 2 and 4. And you can see the approximation is not too bad. Um, the uh, white space above this yellow line is the area that we left out, or our, for instance, our error. Uh, so the question here is, how can we make this more accurate? Well, we can make this more accurate in two ways. We can either use more trapezoids or, much like with the Taylor series, how do we make a Taylor series more accurate? We add higher order terms to it. So since here we use the linear function, or again, a first order polynomial, I can use a higher order polynomial to make my approximation more accurate. And this is going to be the topic for the next lesson. So what about in the case of adding more trapezoids? Well, if you look at the example here on the right, I'm using two trapezoids. So I took the region 4 between 2 and 4, and I subdivided into two regions. And I took each region, uh, each region, and I approximated it using a first order polynomial. So I connected this uh, point to this point and this point to that point. And also, this h is now the width of uh, how, how I define the width of my trapezoid. And it's basically b minus a, which is the upper limit minus the lower limit, divided by um, the number of trapezoids. In this case, 4 minus 2, um, that's going to be 2, divided by 2 trapezoids. So now the width I have is 1. Now what, is the, now, what is the approximation for the area of the, under the curve for ln of x between 2 and 4? Well, it's just going to be the area of this trapezoid plus the area of that trapezoid. Well, what is the area of this trapezoid? Well, it's the width of it, which is h, uh, times the average height, which is f of x naught plus f of x1 divided by 2. 
So this is the area of this trapezoid. And we're going to do the same thing to the other trapezoid, which is still h, um, f of x1 plus f of x2 divided by 2. Okay, and you can see h divided by 2 is common for both uh, terms here, so we're going to take it as a common factor. The one thing I want you to notice, and it's very simple, um, is that I have f of x1 here and f of x1 here because this point is common to this trapezoid and that trapezoid. So we have two of this here. And the reason I emphasize that is because there's going to be a pattern that with every single trapezoid that I add, we're going to have a point that is common to two uh, regions. So let's assume I have um, this here. Say now I have three trapezoids. Yeah, they're un uneven. They're uneven trapezoids, but um, just for the sake of explaining this, so you're gonna find that this is uh, the x1 is the point that is common between those two trapezoids, and now this is x2, which is the common between those two trapezoids, and this this is uh, x3. So if I'm going to formulate a, a formula for this, and again, let's assume those three are of equal uh, width, you're gonna find that I have x naught. And I have two of um, the function value uh, two for x1. I'm going to have two for this, and I'm going to have one for this. So by adding one more trapezoid, I added two f of x um, two, right? So with every so this is the pattern I want you to see. With every trapezoid that you add, you add two f of x i, which is where this equation comes from. So now we have a general formula. Uh, for a multiple application trapezoidal rule, and that means I'm using two or more trapezoids. So in this formula, it's dependent on the widths, and usually uh, uh, they're evenly spaced. Uh, f of x naught, that's the lower limit, in this case is 2, and f of x n, that's the upper limit, is 4, and this is the points in between. So let's assume I have uh, two trapezoids, n is equal to 2. So it's going to be h divided by 2, f of x naught is just the lower limit. So it's going to be 2, and this is going to be 2 minus 1, which means I only have one term in here, and it's going to be f of x1, then f of x2. And you're going to find that it actually reduced to this equation here. And if I have one more trapezoid, say I'm dealing with three trapezoids, it's going to be h divided by 2 still, uh, f of x naught still, and now that's going to be 3 minus 1, so it's going to be 2. So I have two sums here. The first sum is 2 f of x1, and the second one is 2 f of x2, and then the last term is here is f of x3. Um, so you find this is so this is the equation. Not only is it going to be for the multiple application trapezoidal, but this is going to be also the basis for our code. Okay, so kind of to recap briefly, so what did we uh, uh, cover here? We covered the first rule to approximate numerically the area under a uh, function, any function, but in this case we did ln of x. And what we did first is using a first order polynomial, okay? And by doing a first order polynomial, we basically connected the uh, upper limit to the lower limit. And the area under a first order polynomial is a trapezoid, and a trapezoid is width times average height, and that's going to be our approximation. And you can see we only needed to know what the function is. We did not deal with any integration rules or anything. And we found that um, this is slightly inaccurate because we have this white space up here. So we made it more accurate by using uh, multiple trapezoids, and in this case we used two uh, in this graph. And we find it just merely just adding the um, areas of both trapezoids and we as we have here and we took h divided by 2 as a common factor and we saw that there's a pattern that there's a point that is in common that is usually 2 f of x i and that is the thing that always uh, ups when you add uh, each trapezoid okay so uh, given that we have we know what the concept behind it is um, let's go ahead and write the code so much like with any code that we've written thus far uh, just for ease how about we define the function that we're dealing with so if we don't find the function I'm gonna call it f1 and it's gonna be log of a x and if you remember with the VBA log of x is ln of x and I'm gonna call say this trap for trapezoid well, since we're dealing with error, I'm going to say do while. I'm going to set up my loop first. And I'm going to say et is greater than 
uh, 0.1. So with this code, I'm just gonna uh, define, or I'm gonna write a code that uh, relates our approximations to the true approximation that we guys got using the uh, integration by parts technique here. And I'm gonna close the loop down here. And we initialize any error at 100. So ET is equal to 100. And also, what information do we know? We know the upper and lower limits. So A is equal to 2, and B is equal to uh, 4. So like I said, this is the equation is going to be the basis for our code because it handles any number of trapezoids, 1, 2, 3, uh, whatever you would like. Because if, say, for instance, n is equal to 1, so that's 1 minus 1, this entire term cancels out. And we're just left with h divided by 2, f of x naught and plus f of xn, which is basically reduces to this. Uh, so the first thing I want to define in this equation is we see that we need to define h. So h we defined as b minus a divided by the number of trapezoids. Uh, the second thing I want to define is basically the sum here. And I'm going to say 4i is equal to 1, 2, n minus 1. As you see, 1, uh, 1 to n minus 1. And uh, much like with anything, we have to uh, initialize the sum at 0, because this is going to be a sum code. So it's going to be sum is equal to sum plus, and it's going to be 2 multiplied by f1, which is the function that we defined up here. And I want you to pay attention here. I, I'm going to say a plus i multiplied by h. And why did I do that? First of all, this has you have to put a here, or whatever you define the lower limit is, because this function did not def start at 0. It started at 2. So it's going to be 2 multiplied by how many step sizes, OK? So for instance, a plus 1 step size, so this is a plus 1 step size, which is 1h, is going to get us x1. So for the first term, is going to be the sum is equal plus uh, 2 times f of 1, so it's going to be a plus 1 step size, so it's going to be getting the function value at x1 here. So uh, this is the reason for this um, uh, code here. Then I'm going to uh, close the loop here at um, next i. Well, given that I have h and I have the sum, now I have actually enough information uh, to calculate my integral. So I have h divided by 2, and this is going to be multiplied by f1 of a, right? So this first term is the our lower limit, and plus uh, this is the sum that we calculated up here, so it's going to be plus the sum plus f1 of b. And I'm going to close parentheses, and now I have my integral. And now let's relate the integral to the true using the true error. So I'm going to say absolute, and I'm going to say 2.1 five eight 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 minus the integral that we calculated divided by two point one five eight 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 and we're gonna multiply by hundred since we're dealing with percentages. And then I'm gonna write the code that I usually write to output what's happening for each iteration. And with each iteration here is gonna represent uh, one trapezoid. Um, so let's say cells uh, in this case, we're on uh, 28, so it's going to be 27 plus i, and I'm on column 2, and that's going to output i, and this is cells 27 uh, plus i, and this is column 3, and I want to output et, and also cells 27 plus i, and this is on the fourth, and I want to output the int integral. And since I'm using this code and using i, I'm going to have to go up here and initialize i at 1. And also, I'm going to have to up i by 1 for every um, iteration. So i is equal i plus 1. But also, there is one more thing I have to up, and I have to initialize. I have to initialize the n to be equal to 1. So we want to start with the 1 trapezoid. And I also want to up the n by 1 for each loop. So each loop, so we're going to go with one, n equal 1, in other words, one trapezoid. Then it's going to up, up it by 1. So the second loop is going to be second, uh, two trapezoids, then three, then four, until we have enough trapezoids that will reduce the true error to below 
0.1%. Okay, so let's actually run the code and see how it's going to perform. All right, great. So we had it took um, seven iterations, and you can see seven iterations. I mean, it took seven uh, different trapezoids under this curve to reach a true error below 0.1 percent and we reached 2.15718 as opposed to the true error 2.15888 well in the next lesson we're going to actually use the second technique of actually making um, this more accurate which is using a higher order uh, polynomial or a second order polynomial to be uh, specific well that's it for this lesson and i'll see you in the next lesson